Hi, I'm Dr. Gregory Pace, coming to you with another Facebook video. On July 22nd and 23rd, for Saturday and Sunday, from 10 to 12 Mountain Time, I'll be teaching a class on what to do when your remedy prescription fails. Everybody loves to focus on their homeopathic prescriptions, but what do you do when you don't get the result you're looking for? How do you interpret your patient's response? Should you change potencies? Should you change remedies? Is it time to continue dosing? Is it time to stop? I'll be answering these and other questions in my four-hour class. To make it as practical as possible, I'll be discussing different scenarios and explaining successful case management using examples from my practice. Here's a situation that came up just the other day. Essie returned for her first visit since we changed her homeopathic medicine to Lachesis. At her last visit, she complained of cramping pain in her lower abdomen before her last menses, pelvic pain, poor sleep, irritability with her family, and an itchy, scaly eruption on her left index finger. After dosing Lachesis in the medicinal solution over the last month, she reported that her sleep was crazy good, there had been no cramping pain in her lower abdomen before her last menses, only occasional twinges of the pelvic pain, the eruption on her left index finger is good, was gone, and her mood is being good overall. This is the kind of response I expect when the correct homeopathic medicine has been given. However, when I asked Essie if there were any new symptoms in the last month, she described the development of a bunion in her left big toe that had come on over the last couple of weeks. The interesting aspect was it was painless. No sensitivity wearing shoes, no discomfort with walking. In my experience, that's unusual. All the patients that I've had that have mentioned a bunion have done so because of pain or discom discomfort. My first thought was, does Lachesis have bunions in its symptomatology? But no, bunions do not show up in the Lachesis proving. The only bunion reference I could find was in Kent's lesser writings, where he described discomfort in the fourth toe that moved to the first toe, and the patient thought maybe it was a bunion. So I advised SC to stop dosing, check back in a week or sooner if her symptoms worsen. My thinking, my thinking being that if the bunion was due to the lachesis dosing, that it would go away the way that it had come on. At the same time, I didn't want to leave her in the lurch, have her symptoms worsen, and then lose all the ground that we had gained over a period of time. Given that Essie had responded so well to the lachesis on every level, I expected that she might need to dose again, given that this was her chronic state. But not, but only if her symptoms returned. In other words, we would individualize her dosing to match what she needed. We would use her vital force to show us what we needed to get, what we needed to do. These are the kinds of decisions that we need to make to ensure rapid, gentle, and permanent restoration of health. If you have any questions about this case vignette and the decisions that I made, please leave them in the comment area below. If you'd like to virtually attend my class, which is being produced by Medicine Talk Pro, please email me at gpace at g, excuse me, gpaceND at gmail.com. If you found this video interesting, please share it with your tribe. Thanks for watching.